The last two years have been tough years for the local agriculture sector, more so for the rice sector, with the impact of climate change clearly evident in shortened opportunity times for sowing and harvesting. But despite these challenges, challenges compounded by rising input costs, Guyana's farmers continue to demonstrate their resilience and commitment to raising the bar where it comes to rice production. The Guyana Rice Development Board has disclosed that through the efforts of the nation's farmers, the national average yield for the first crop this year has risen to over 6 tons per hectare, with harvest at just over 55%. Agriculture Minister Zofika Mustafa has lauded the efforts of rice farmers for this first crop, crediting them with applying the recommended agronomic practices that ensure that despite the challenges, their productivity has been maximized. First of all, I want to say that we have seen over the last two and a half years, not only the input costs for rice would have increased tremendously, we have seen that the weather condition also was very unfavorable. And although we have seen the weather condition that were unfavorable, we have seen what the pandemic has done with input costs, especially fertilizer, and other costs associated with the production of rice, um, we have still persevered and we have came out um, higher than last year in terms of production. What we have, um, for 2021, when you compare 2022 production to 2021 production, we have surpassed 2021 production. Although all these factors you would have to take into consideration and that if it wasn't those issues, we would have had bumper crops, high increase, what we are seeing this crop, I have seen a trend this crop that we are presently um, reaping. I am seeing yield have increased tremendously. This morning I was looking at our yield and I am seeing about approximately 6.2 tons per hectare. And that show a marked improvement where the weather condition is concerned. We have seen that the weather, the weather condition, we have had favorable weather condition in terms of reaping. We have had favorable weather condition in almost the entire crop and I'm hoping that 2020, the second crop of 2023, we'll have a bumper crop and at the end of 2023, I'm very optimistic that we'll have a record breaking production. Minister Mustafa stressed that government is cognizant of the challenges farmers are facing as regards import costs and has been providing the necessary support to the nation's farmers in a number of critical ways. He expressed optimism that input costs are on the decline and will continue to do so over the rest of 2023. But what I am seeing too, because the government is cognizant of the fact that the input costs of rice production have increased tremendously and we have made resources available, as a matter of fact, last crop and the, end, and the, the, crop, the last crop of 2022 we would have given fertilizer subsidies to farmers. We have reduced land rental and DNI charges to bring down the costs. Um, we have made other input costs um, avail um, less expensive for the farmers. And we have been working with the farmers to develop higher yield. But also farmers have to take into consideration they will have to also contribute to the reduction of the cost of production. Because what we have, I've noticed, especially in places like regions two, five, and six, I have seen farmers have been run racing one another to increase rental for land. And you know for a fact that the government have been reducing the costs of rental and DNI charges over the years. When we took back government or when we went back into government in August of 2020, we had to reverse DNI charges and land rental by almost, not by almost, by $15,000 just to reduce the cost. I am very optimistic though, however, that the future cost, input costs, will reduce. I am seeing that the cost of fertilizer are coming down. Other um, input, I am seeing that it will come down. Government have reduced, make the, um, well, take out all the taxes and fuel. And these are the high input for, for, uh, for the um, production of rice. And I'm hoping that with all these intervention by the government, we have taken out the VAT and all the, all the 
costs associated for the input in rice. We have taken out, we have um, t took out all the tox toxins and other things. So I'm hoping that we can bring down with these additional interventions we will bring down the cost of production. The Agriculture Minister also referred to what he described as the unscrupulous actions of persons owning leases for state lands that are subletting to rice farmers at exorbitant rates, further driving up the baseline cost of production. The main thing is to bring down the cost of production, but farmers have to play their part. Farmers will have to ensure, and I am looking seriously, people who are subletting government state land because the contract or the um, leases that they have, it has a clause that say that no land must be sublet. And this is a problem. For example, in the MMA scheme, we are seeing farmers are paying between twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars per acre for a land, private arrangement. We are charging them just three thousand five hundred dollars. So those things are pushing up the costs. And I've asked the board to look at those issues and come up to and bring out bring out some recommendation which I can look at and discuss at a policy level with cabinet and the, the president so that we can take a stand on these issues. But as you, you know for a fact that with these the government input in the rice industry, we will ensure that we bring down the cost in the near future. Minister Mustafa pointed to the imminent gas to shore project, which he said will allow Guyana to, among other things, establish its own fertilizer plant and really be able to manage the issue of fertilizer cost and availability. And you know, also with the gas to shore project that we that, that will commence shortly, and at the, com at the completion of this project. Uh, for example, energy costs will drop tremendously. You know, for a fact, the Vice President will be pushing this on uh, electricity costs by 50%. Cooking gas will be dropping um, tremendously. But more importantly, we are also looking to build our own fertilizer plant. And as long as we can have cheap fertilizer in another three years, by 2025, for the farmers, that will ease the burden tremendously on the farmers. And with high yielding, I'm, uh, I've sent a team recently, with a giant team, with Grama and the GRDB to Brazil, looking to enhance our seed producing facility and production to have a high yielding seed so that we can increase yield from 6.1, 6 6.2 tons to close to about 8 to 10 tons per hectare. And if that is so, then farmers will benefit tremendously. We reduce costs and high yield and they will have better production and better revenue generation. The harvest of the first crop this year is now just over 55 percent and according to Deputy General Manager of the Guyana Rice Development Board, GRDB, Mr. Kuldip Ragnott, the nation's farmers are reaping the benefits of the board's ongoing training sessions on agronomic practices that will realize the full yield potential of the GRDB 16 and other high yielding varieties. So for this crop, uh, as you, you are aware, we are in the harvesting season. The crop is being harvested. Uh, we have about 56% of the acreage that was sown has been harvested. Uh, region, region 4, that region is proceeding the fastest with about 85% of the acreage sown harvested. This is followed by region 6, there was 61%. Region 5, 58%. Region 3, 45%. And that is being followed by Region 2, 39%. The, the yields, as, as you mentioned, has been exceedingly good, despite, uh, despite the, the challenges that were faced during the crop. Those challenges uh, was kind of overcome in the sense that the, the non-achievement of the target or the less acreage zone was compensated in some way 
by the by the high yields that we receive uh, that will obtain this crop and, and that we're seeing. Overall, the national average yield now is about 6.2 tons per hectare. Those yields were achieved despite the challenges that I mentioned. They were achieved because the, the board would have aggressively pursued the program, its program of, of training of farmers in, in terms of the, the technologies or the improved technologies that are available. We, we work with, in a special project, we, we work with the, the lower yielding farmers, those farmers who were obtaining 25 bags per acre and less. They were targeted and given special attention, special assistance, special support from the board in order for them to increase their level of performance and, and consequently their yields. Another key intervention during the latter stages of the crop is the Ministry of Agriculture intervening in paddy bug management through aerial spraying of approximately 40,000 acres of rice that were at risk with the help of a service provider out of Suriname after the local provider pulled their service out of West Berbice. The Suriname service was also later used for the broadcast of fertilizer for more than 70,000 acres of rice in the West Berbice area. Looking ahead to the second crop this year, the GRDB official said the outlook is good as some 70,000 acres of lands that were left abandoned after the floods of 2001 are now being prepared and will be added to those that were cultivated this crop, a prospect that will mean a second crop of more than 200,000 acres. Yeah, well, I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, the acreage, we were unable to achieve the acreage that was targeted for this crop. That was due primarily because of the, 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 um, the rainy weather condition that I mentioned earlier didn't allow for, for land preparation to take place. Um, but more importantly, the, some of the acreage, especially in the riverine areas, Maikoni rivers, Abari river, those areas that weren't cultivated, they did not dry out since the 2021 flood. Because over the last two years, you know, we have been having persistent, persistent rainfall. So those, those acreage never dry out. As a matter of fact, in Region 5, we had about 35,000 acres that were not cultivated over the past four seasons. With the, with the weather conditions that we're having now, the excellent weather condition, and this, this is what we, this, this weather here, we, is after four years then we are experiencing this, this weather. The farmers are taking full advantage of it now. In those river areas, those areas that were, were left back, they have actually dried out. Farmers are preparing those lands. So those lands will go back into cultivation. The lands that were, were lost, last crop, because they were unable to be harvested, those lands going to go back in, into cultivation as well. And of course, the land, land that were uh, cultivated this crop, they're going to go back into cultivation. Yields per hectare for the last crop of 2022 was 5.9 tons. That yield has now moved up to the new average of over 6.2 tons, with some farmers reporting as much as 7.5 tons per hectare. <laughs>